Hey guys, I made some more farmhouse or more fall goodies, pumpkins included. Are you ready? Because I am. So I'm Whitney with Crafty Thoughts and Whatnots. Welcome to my channel and let's jump into these DIYs. First off, we stopped at the Goodwill. Now, in all transparency, I bought this, you can see there, March 5th is when that tag, yeah, I bought this months ago. Goodwill is an awesome place for candlesticks. I got this beautiful girl for $3.99. I probably paid less for that because it stuff's on sale, but it was for original from Kirkland's. Went right into my basket. And then this here is a little wood round I got at uh, Michael's for a dollar. We're gonna turn this into a candlestick arrangement. I love making these things. They are super addictive and I love them. So we're gonna kind of do this as a, as a second part. So this thing's not necessarily integral to today's project, but it's just like a little bit of a, let me just show you that I made it and we're gonna use it in the uh, staging process, sort of, kind of. So I cleaned it all off. And I'm not really gonna do anything to it. I'm not even gonna distress it. I know, I know, I don't have a fever, guys. I'm actually not gonna distress it. I know, something, I went and checked. I don't have a fever. <laughs> but uh, that does, that's not, that's not to say that I probably won't do that eventually. So I'm gonna attach my wood round to my candlestick using some Starbond. Now that is raw wood and I'm attaching it to resin. And so I put the medium adhesive on, the, or the glue on the candlestick and I put the accelerator on my wood round and I let that sit for, I don't know, approximately some small amount of time and it's basically permanent. I love Starbond. Now I'm gonna take my, um, lost my complete train of thought because I'm watching instead of actually talking because it's so pretty. Um, <laughs> it's a uh, ink, the color ink, uh, Waverly chalk paint. I put it in a little extra thing just to do these smaller things. So just paint my wood round after you get it on there. Starbun's an immediate hold. It's awesome. Now, later on, I use it on another one of my DIYs in here and it didn't work, but I will tell you more about that when we get there because you have to worry, you have to worry more about the application. Anywho. So we put that off to the side, let the paint dry. Now we're gonna pick up one of these natural wreaths. It's an eight inch wreath. Um, you guys have seen these many times. They're really popular for those tulip wreaths everyone does in the springtime. So I had an eight inch one on hand. I'm gonna make a candle ring, not necessarily a wreath, but we can use it as a wreath. So I've got some four, or sorry, that's six inch wide burlap from Michaels. And then I've got these two picks that I absolutely love from Hobby Lobby. One is hops, the other has some wheat and some, eucalyptus in it is very pretty very fall colors love them to death i'm going to wrap our natural wreath in the burlap now i i didn't have just enough i ran out just to not cover a few pieces so i had to get a tiny little spot off of the next roll and what i'm going to do here is i'm just using very minimal glue i just don't want the plastic and that you know wreath showing underneath because again pieces of this do show so uh just to secure a little bit more than just glue i went and got floral pins this is a whole floral pin if you're not familiar with it it's just a u-shaped piece of metal most florists use these in a lot of times to secure actual fresh fresh items together or with their you know the different type of mosses that they use so because they were sort of long i did cut the ends off and i'm just using them no glue i'm just using them to secure down our bottom of i'm oh, sorry not the bottom but we're, we're using it to secure the the burlap to the bottom of the wreath because i wanted it to be just a little finished so here for the hops picks that i got at hobby lobby i did not change them i just cut the stems off and i added a pick to the bottom for with my pick machine as you can see it turns all of your florals into small threatening shivs and it's really really great also you will cut yourself if you are absent-minded or distracted by pretty things such as myself <laughs> not saying you know Speaking for a friend, technically you guys all know, it's me. I've cut myself, I poked myself. They're pretty dangerous, but you know, everything is. <laughs> so is leaving the house. <laughs> In any event, put uh, just uh, finding a way to get these items sharp through the burlap and into our wreath, that's basically what I did. Now I am gluing these things in, so off to the side, I have my glue pot or a glue skillet with hot glue in it, and I'm dipping them in. So each one of those second the second set of, of little bundles I got from Hobby Lobby, I completely dis deconstructed them and put them into their own bundles and put picks on the ends of those. So now I have these little brown ferns, I have these little pieces of wheat, and then I have these little uh, separate bundles of eucalyptus. You can see in there, there might be a couple pieces already. I took one bundle apart and kind of left it in two pieces, but I wasn't happy with it. But then I didn't want to rip it all apart. Here I actually found one that I left in there whole. So I have, of course I had to take it apart put it back in there. 
and just start adding things in. So I didn't really use necessarily a pattern or a purpose here. I just kind of did what was making me happy, what made things start to feel pretty. So I was going in one direction though. I was going either count, you pick one clockwise or counterclockwise, but go in one direction with everything because this isn't going to be a actual wreath. This is more of a candle ring. So we're going to put something in the middle of it to, you know, decorate things further. And technically, once we're done with this girl here, we're going to put this on top of our candle holder that we made. The tall candlestick with the wood round on it. It's a topper. It doesn't have to be secured because it's actually got a good weight to it. And we're going to push, we're going to put a, a pumpkin or a candle in the middle of it and it'll be great. And you don't have to worry about it falling over. It's, it's, it's not one of those things that you need to worry about. After you get all your picks in, I kind of adjust them, pull them down on one side. Some of the sides of this wreath will show, but because we covered it in burlap, it's beautiful. I love these colors. All these burnt oranges and yellows and browns are just, they're giving me such cozy vibes. I'm loving every second of it. So I like the movement too. That's why I actually slowed that down so you could see it. Now I had this little thing sitting off to the side and I thought, this is so pretty. It's a little Dollar Tree pumpkin shaped uh, jar that everybody has seen, many have used. So here after our paint has dried, I'm gonna bring our candlestick back in. And yes, this is a bad view because my camera filming and recording, you know, angles aren't the best. And that's zoomed out as far as I can get, but we all know this is a very tall candlestick. So here's one idea where you could put the jar in there, maybe with some fairy lights in it, or even just put a candle in there instead of just that. So what I wanna do, Instead, that was just an idea. I was messing around with stuff. I thought it was pretty. I left it in the video. So we're going to take this little piece of styrofoam here that you also that I can pick up at Dollar Tree. Or if you have some scraps, just put a piece of styrofoam in the middle. What we're going to do is we're going to attach it to our candlestick. And this is something that will be replaceable. This is something that's interchangeable. So yes, glue down your styrofoam because we're going to make arrangements out of this. And you guys will see me transition this pretty girl from our fall little thing here. Uh, into Christmas and then beyond. So here I just grabbed a Hobby Lobby pumpkin. I'm only going to cut the stem off very, very uh, short. And I'm going to show you here. We'll just put the wreath back on top, stick the pumpkin in the middle. And if you're happy with that, move along. It is beautiful. You don't need to really need to put anything in there, but I do add a little bit more because I'm extra, a little extra. Um, you could also put some Spanish moss in there if you don't mind making a huge mess in order to get to the end result of beautifulness. But what I end up inevitably doing is I grab pretty much anything that I can see that would be close to me. I, I thought also I needed a bigger pumpkin. I know I left this in too. Not a good angle, but I felt like that smaller pumpkin was too small. But look how beautiful that is. That is a bigger pumpkin, but I don't like the green. So if I had a different color pumpkin, I guarantee guys I wouldn't have put a small pumpkin in there just so you know. But that larger pumpkin would have been it for me because it's beautiful. So because I have a little bit of space on each side, I have these little berry bushes or picks from Dollar Tree. I bought all cream colored this year. Normally don't buy them because they do fall apart fairly easy, but for smaller projects and for items you know that won't get a lot of traffic, so people won't touch them or you know walk past them too quickly, you won't have styrofoam balls all over the floor. I felt that it looked great. And that's what she looks like. I. I like this particular setup, but then also I'm going to show you guys, I have a few pictures coming at the end of this little short video to show you what else you can do with this candle ring. That's the candlestick is part of it because I love making candlestick arrangements. They are absolutely addicting. If you've ever tried one, you'll know you can make, I can make tons of them. I'd make them all day long if I could. And you're seeing some peaks of the other ones. So here's the main, here's the main event. Again, you guys know I'm getting my water in, don't you? Because that app will not not embarrass me. <laughs> no matter what time I'm doing a voice recording, I always end up having this app, which you know what it means. It means it's dinner time. <laughs> and oh, here, here's our pictures. And here's the, it actually, I put it on the wall as a wreath. Now in eight inch wreath, it actually turned out to be a lot bigger and it has a good presence. And then now here, that's our other DIY that you're going to see. I put it on top of my book stack and I put my other DIY inside of it. That's on a pedestal. There's a lot of applications for that, that wreath candle ring. You guys let me know what you think of, of, of which one's your favorite. So now our second one, we're going to make like this little close stack here. You see that here? All three of those girls are from Hobby Lobby. So you guys know the, the wood round, the glass candlestick, and those plastic cloches are very popular. I've seen a lot of DIYers use them. I've seen them in a lot of halls. Every time I go to a Dollar Tree, I see them. Now those candlesticks, again, now here's, here's the mistake when I was talking about earlier. It says, I specifically looked it up. It says it's for wood, glass, blah, 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 blah. 
this thing stuck together the entirety of me making this project, but it, it failed at the end. And I'll tell you about that when you'll see it. I left it in so you can show you what I did to fix it. So now the bottom of the cloche, we need to fill it up with some tumbling tower blocks, basically Jenga pieces from the Dollar Tree, because it's really hollow on the bottom. And I didn't want just that thin little ridge to be the only thing connecting it to the wood. So in this instance, I'm using the wood and wood power because I connected the plastic with hot glue. Also first scuff up the, the plastic, which I end up covering this with ribbon. So I don't know if it's that important for us to do this, but it's still a step that I put in because a lot of times, guys, my, my plans change as I make things. Please tell me I'm not alone with that. I'm like, I set out forth to do one thing. It turned into five. <laughs> I love being human and I love having everything in common with so many of you out there. So also that label came off super easy. And uh, here's a finial cap I got off of Amazon. Should you choose to want to purchase them, they are in my Amazon shop. Link is in the description and the pin comment below. They were fairly inexpensive. I think I got a pack of 12 of them. So I'm gonna paint the top of that guy black. I think that the top of the cloche needs to have something on it to make it look more high-end, make it look more fancy, elegant, whatever. I, I needed to have a finial on the top. Now, if I didn't have that little finial cap, I would have used something, even a button or another pumpkin or something decorative, a bow, who knows. But I have those little wooden caps, so I'll use them. But you can also get some from Walmart, Michaels. You can get them, uh, Hobby Lobby carries them. Um, they're all just different shapes and sizes, so. Apply the finial cap or topper you see fit to your project. So again, I'm giving everything a coat of paint. Now, because I have glass on the bottom, um, I was a little worried that any of this. Now that's one coat of everything. And I think it looked great. I was a tiny bit concerned that that might come off. So I did grab my Mod Podge, you can see sitting there. But I'm gonna attach this finial cap first. So I dab off, put a little bit too much glue on that first. But then I just put that little finial cap on top and it just makes a huge impression. Also, I had to get a little bit of the glue squished out, got a little bit of the goopies on the side. So what was making me nervous was the plastic here. I didn't put this down. I did scuff it up with some 80 grit sandpaper, but the glass I didn't. So I'm putting a coat of Mod Podge on the outside of the paint. Didn't like how it dried, see that? It's supposed to be matte Mod Podge, but it made it look shiny. So I was like, meh, let's just put another coat of chalk paint on the outside of it. If in any event this thing chips, then it chips and it'll go more towards my farmhouse, more towards that weathered stuff I like, we will move on. If you guys have better tips, I'm not very experienced in painting. I just kind of paint things as I see fit. So you guys let us know in the comments. I love learning from everyone we all share. Uh, so basically the main event of this little close is going to be these cute little mushrooms you get at the Dollar Tree. So I got some blue ones and I, ha I still have this leftover brown one from a, an, um, an, an event. From an event I did. <laughs> from a project I did earlier. But I didn't want this to have the little white speckles on it. So I'm actually going to show you guys how long I spent. <laughs> Trying to make this cute little punky, or it's not a punky. It's not a punky, but it's because they're, they're cute like pumpkins. I love mushrooms. I want to hug them. So I painted this with just a real brown color. So here's attempt number one. I thought, Whitney, you are an aspiring artist. You can do this. I think it looks great like that, but got to be extra. That's what my grandma used to say. Instead of extra, she said extra. <laughs> just like Tuesday was Tuesday. I got to be extra. So I thought I'm going to get this little dot tool out or whatever this, this stylus tool out and I'm going to get my cashew chalk paint and I'm going to put the cutest little spots on the top of this and they're going to be perfect. And then I got the paintbrush and I was like, okay, these dots are a little bit too small with the stylus. Let me get this paintbrush. And then I was like, okay, well, hold on. I hate this. Let me just keep going. Because don't give up yet. When you it might, it might turn out fine. Then I was getting a little bit. It's like, okay, I just have to load more paint into this paintbrush and then just start doing, don't do dots. What you do just, you know, add some shapes, just, Pretend it's just, you know, just go for it. Don't even worry about it. Just pretend you're just, you're, you're crazy. You had a bunch of sugar and you're just going for it, right? Yeah, it gets worse. The paintbrush wasn't really holding as much paint as I wanted. And then I would glob too much on it at one point. And I was like, let me just try to continue to mess this up until I literally feel like I have to either trash it. And then I said, let me put some more dots around it with the stylus tool. Now it looks like it has the measles. And it also, I kind of like it, but now I was like, mm hated it so we moved on to attempt two and attempt two <laughs> you as you will see here stems from me taking my baby wipe and wiping off all of the splotches i put on before and i said okay let me just go at this real messily make it look like it's one of those poisonous mushrooms or something <laughs> i mean after all it's going to be in a cloche no one's going to touch it 
And I thought, let me blot. I'm going to blot all this on here with my baby wipe and make it look really cool. And I thought I was okay with that. I was not happy. Hated it. And attempt number three. I said, Whitney, we're going to go low key. So we painted another coat of the same real brown color from Folk Art. See, there, there's brown again. She's pretty again. And this time we're going to come in with another brown. This one is Folk Art, and I believe it said Coffee Bean. So I just picked a lighter brown color. And then I kind of went in X pattern, but I was just trying to stem off from there to make it look like it's kind of blended. I was going to go for a blended of lighter brown towards the top and the brown, darker brown towards the bottom. This one is the one I stuck with. I honestly don't know which one I like more. You guys tell me in the comments, which one did you prefer? Did you prefer, you know, happy little Mario time mushrooms or a splotchy poisonous mushroom? Or this honestly reminds me somewhat of a baby portobello mushroom. Maybe I was channeling my inner hunger. And now I'm taking my third color, which is warm brown. And this is just an acrylic paint. It's just craft paint. I don't know what brand that is. I just half the time go at the colors I like. I don't look at the brands. And this one was a lighter color. I didn't use a paintbrush. I just used my baby wipe to dab it along and blend it better. And I think that I ended up getting exactly what I was looking for. I just got sort of a gradient color of three browns. And it's kind of that it. <laughs> and that's where we left it. That took all a lot of time out of my life, guys. A lot of time. But we'll, we won't talk about that. So here's our cloche. We've got everything. The paint's dried. Everything's dried. And then here's our finished project mushroom. She's so cute. Now, we're going to get our stash of styrofoam. Oh, look, a little tiny block most people would throw away. Not me. <laughs> we're going to take it. We're going to put it in the middle. But guess what? We aren't using this whole piece. I just want it as a little mushroom pedestal. So I'm going to take a little tiny square, put that in the middle, make sure that everything fits. Ta-da! It does. And now I'm going to cover the base in styrofoam. I'm sorry. I'm covering the styrofoam in Spanish moss. Ay, Whitney. Hmm. And so I'm just uh, or organizing and, and kind of fluffing it and moving it around. We're going to turn our mushroom here into a pick. So that is literally just a piece of a stem I got from a floral wire, from a floral bush of something I didn't use. I'm cutting off a couple of these leaves that we used on our previous DIY and our candle ring wreath because we're keeping a good theme with these colors. These are very pretty fall colors. Now, you definitely don't have to say that this is fall inspired. If you are a mushroom lover enthusiast, like I am a pumpkin lover, this is something that you could possibly leave out year round, but then also change it for the seasons. Mushrooms obviously are very spring and year round. You can, you can have something like that. The rest of this is basically me taking items from that little pick you see there on my desk on my tabletop and I'm cutting pieces off and I'm just getting it to stick into the styrofoam that the mushroom has been placed on. Now the little wheat thing I took there on the side, it wasn't sitting where I wanted. So I actually glued it to the side of the mushroom turned out so cute. And here I'm twirling this in my hands so that I can get the Spanish moss to stay inward so that it's easier to put that cloche on at the, at the end when we're done. And I'm just adding all the little cute pieces here and there, just here and there, just tucking them in just little, little bits of glue, Again, this once we close that cloche, it's got a good seal on it. I didn't think I would um, need to really push as hard as I did. And when I figured out that's how we have to close it, I decided I wasn't going to use any glue on it. So it's good to go the way it is. Now, just check your cloche when you get inside. And here I want to point to you. Look how cute the little tiny details are. I just love it. So even though that technically is the back, you could still point this in any direction and make it a centerpiece item. It's a, It would be kind of a small centerpiece. But again, anywhere you want to set things that make them pretty by all means set this out make every angle pretty make sure you clean your cloche off <clears throat> excuse me clean your cloche guys clean your cloches make sure you clean off the inside and then here i'm using my stylus just to tuck some things in that way i can get a really good feel and then one of the leaves you can't really see too well but one of the leaves wasn't moving the right way i wanted it to so i was just using one of the sticks i had in my copious amounts of garbage i keep <laughs> just using it um to talk it into to, to sitting the way I wanted it to. And then this sale right here is actually farmhouse ribbon from Dollar Tree. I like this stuff, but not like the other farmhouse with the stripes on it. I still cannot find it. And you guys, I love that stuff. But this is the brown color and it complemented everything so well. And we're coming up very close to where our pedestal falls off and fails on us. But I'm just literally putting a stripe of ribbon around the base. As you see me here, the, now here the pedestal is about to pop off. You'll see in about a second. Bam, right there. You can see. I just folded a hem in this, and then I guess I put some pressure too hard on the bottom while it was holding down my glue. 
and the pedestal popped off. So the Starbond is a very good adhesive. In this application, it did not work. So in any event, we're just going to move on and we're not going to use it again. So I took my sandpaper. This is 80 grit sandpaper on finger sander. I love these finger sanders. And I kind of just went at the star bond. I didn't scratch up any of my paint. Um, I didn't have to repaint anything. So now we're going to do it the old fashioned way. We're putting E6000 and hot glue on here and we're going to let it sit for a while. So I put E6000 on every other one of those diagonal pieces. And then as soon as you're ready, then you put your hot glue on, try not to mix it as much as possible and then set it there like that. And then we're done. The uh, hot glue gives you an immediate hold and the E6000 will cure, will cure over time and it will become cement. E6000 is crazy good. It just, if you don't have patience like I don't, <laughs> you and I are in the same boat, sister. Sister, brother, whoever, friend. I just don't like waiting for the E6000. Now the candlestick that we made previous with the wood round, the, the candlestick from, from Goodwill, that was worth with Starbond and that stuff is solid. I went and picked it up. I set it on its side. I pushed on it. I, I, you know, I smacked it in my hand. It's not going anywhere. So it, I have a feeling it had a lot to do with the glass. So in any event, we learn from all these goodies and it's great. And I think this little girl turned out beautiful. You guys let me know. All you mushroom lovers out there, you let me know. I personally love to eat them as well as decorate with them. Man, do I want some pizza <laughs> or some pasta or basically anything. Mushrooms, just, you know, a fork. <laughs> now, this is our last DIY, fairly easy. And actually it turned out way better than I had planned on it. So you're gonna take these um, paint sticks. And then also I got these, uh, these are wood pile letters. They're two and a half inch white wooden letters I got at, um, not Dollar Tree. I got them at, at Hobby Lobby. So they're 99 cents a letter. So now these two and a half, does that look familiar? Gather guys. That was the previous video. Never be ashamed to reuse your stuff. Why would I only use that for one video guys? Huh? I make things constantly. So until that thing is literally not able to hold my runoff anymore, or it just looks really bad. That's when I'll get it away. So I'm going to take my Waverly Antique Wax and I'm going to whack, uh, stain the sides, front, back, each end of these long painter sticks. Now, I don't know why I thought they were three feet long, which is ridiculous, Winnie. <laughs> They're 21 inches long. And I at first thought I was going to get rid of the handles because the word pumpkin, I, I bought those little white letters, letters P-U-M-P-K-I-N, would fit perfectly before the handle. But then I had an idea the handle would be great to tie ribbon around. So I left them on. I did not cut them down. Now what I'm doing is I'm just sanding the edges because I need to have just a little bit of farmhouse somewhere. And I didn't want to distress it with, with more paint, but I just had to have some sort of distressing. And I love the way that the raw wood shows through the darker stain. So I just ran with it and it made me so happy. And then of course, because I made a mess, I got to use my vacuum and that makes me happy too. <laughs> So what I want to do is I want to keep these together. So I grabbed a uh, second piece of Dollar Tree wood. Now this is just a strip of wood that I liked the thickness of. So I'm getting all of my letters out to make sure that I have the painter sticks separated at a distance that would make it comparable and that the letters would still be able to have contact on the top and bottom stick. So as you can see here, I flipped them front side down because we don't want the numbers showing. So this is now the back. And we're going to use these jumbo popsicle sticks or craft sticks that you can get at Walmart. And we're going to put a little bit of stain in the middle. And then what I did was I put hot glue on either end. And then I put a couple staples with my staple gun to reinforce that. So you'll see here as I go in the pattern, I'm only putting the stain in the middle because that's what's going to show from the front. I don't want to put the stain on the all because again, that's wax. So the hot glue won't stick to it. So we only want to try to minimize as much as we can. And I was like, oh, well, I have leftover wax stain in my my, my um, paper towel here, so let's just do it that way. So I only stained the centers, I glued them all down, I put some more staples in it, and then I took my extra wax and then added some more wax. So now the back looks really good too. You guys know I'm about a lot of finished pieces. I don't like things to look really, really bad on the back. I want the back to look just as, if not pretty, at least decent. And to me, the construction of this, it's very picket fence, isn't it? It's very farmhouse, picket fence, barn door, it just gives me that vibe and it's making me so happy. Now this is basically a pumpkin in the literal sense of the word, literally. <laughs> because even this right now, it's not the shape of a pumpkin, but it's the word pumpkin. And even looking at the word makes me happy. Really guys, I'm telling you. I don't know what the condition is I have, but the, the word pumpkin is in it and it makes me happy. So 
I, f I found these letters at Hobby Lobby when I went that last time and I came home and I did that big haul. I showed you guys those letters. I'm pretty sure I got them on sale. It might not have applied because a lot of their wood pile stuff, it'll tell you that there's a sale running, but for anything under like $2.99, it wouldn't apply. These were 99 cents each. You can't be mad at a dollar a letter. They're decent size and thickness. They're already painted. Their finish on them is great. Not mad at you at all, Hobby Lobby. So I bought each, each letter, 99 cent each, made me happy. And they had some other letters that they were clearancing out. They were a little bit smaller. So never fret that you can't find another letter. This is just the size and the application I figured I would do. And this little sign makes me happier than you can. This is great for a shelf sitter. Put this off to the side next to a really big pumpkin arrangement you've made. You can even add the word hello to the end, kind of going vertically. So it says hello pumpkin. I didn't. You guys will see what I did. Also, I'm using one of my smaller rulers there just to make sure that the bottoms are lining up even because we want it to look somewhat straight no we don't want them crazy crazy off now i think one of my letters is a little off but that doesn't matter it's all cute also you have to get clamp happy because one of these isn't as thick as the other so some of the letters were touching on the bottom but not the top and because we're using e6000 i had to get clamp happy and i let that sit overnight so here's the ribbon i want to use now it's a two and a half inch wide ribbon it's a mustard color with a checked pattern on it that i got at craftoutlet.com a few years ago um, I love this color. It is a beautiful fall color. So what I want to do is make it into a one inch ribbon. So I'm going to basically, I test wrapped the, the handles as though I was going to tie the bow I intended. Then I cut that off. So now I'm cutting the wire ends off of it. And what I'm going to do after I do this is I'm going to cut the ribbon in half to make it a little bit more than a one inch ribbon because that's what I really wanted but I did not have this color or pattern and so I made my own now it's not wired but we do not need that because we are going to do a cute little um a jute twine tied bow in the middle so at first I thought after I got my two strips here that I was just going to tie it around the handle like I had previously you know tested out to measure what I needed and then I thought no I don't like it. it's kind of sloppy so at first I just took okay we're just going to wrap the handle in the little, you know, the divots there where, where the, the wood comes down in. So I'm just going to wrap it around. I put my glue on, cut it off, and I'm going to put another. So I'm securing just a nice little band right here at the end. And then with what's left over, we're going to do one of those little awareness ribbon, you know, squeeze in the middle ones. Also, because this started to fray, I got my lighter out and I started to, oh, what do you call that? I just started to, to burn it. <laughs> so that it stops fraying you know it melts it to a point where it won't fray anymore and then you'll see here for some reason i could not do one of the simplest things if i had been trying to spell my name i would have been spelling it wrong for at least 20 minutes but for some reason i could not get this dang twine to tie in the middle of the bow and i felt like leaving like you guys i've sped this up six times this is six times as fast as it normally went in any event squish it in the middle grab a small piece of twine tie that in the middle and you're good to go. So I'm now using the glue to move around the tail and the loops where I want them to. And now we're going to add little tendrils because even though we don't have a physical pumpkin, we need to have tendrils somewhere because they make me happy. That is exactly the reason why. If you need to know a reason, I will tell you the reason is to make me happy. So I took the larger berries off of them and I just left the pit part and I tied them and I kind of twirled them around my pencil to make them the coils a little bit smaller. That came from a garland I got at Hobby Lobby. The garland is just literally a six foot garland of nothing but those berries and pip, pip berries and bigger berries. And it's a great deal, especially if you get it when they're 50% off and you can use that to supply all of your decorating and decor needs. Of course, rip it into many pieces like I do. And then now I'm going to add a small little finger bowl. And there is a tutorial for finger bows in my channel. I have it linked in the description below. It is a great tutorial. It is helpful and it will get easier. And I just added the buffalo check in the middle of that because that is the last little, just the cherry on top of my farmhouse dreams. <laughs> I can't do anything without throwing some sort of buffalo check in somewhere. It just makes my heart happy, so I can't help it. And then here's me gluing down the tail and one of the loops because I said so. <laughs> so domino I love this and of course I can't just leave it alone I was like oh I have this little tiny piece of plastic this little it's a little piece of wheat that I pulled off of the stem off of that little that little um berry bush and also one of those leaves too I couldn't help it I think all the colors are complementing each other and that mustard yellow is a very great color for fall now you saw there I left the clamps on overnight so I had to wait because again we're using e6000 all of these letters are on solid 
to just leave something heavy on it, a dictionary, a book, a ream of paper, a lamp, you know, small children, whatever you got to do. <laughs> leave it on for a certain amount of time. But even then, look how nice, after all of it dries and even the wax is no longer tacky, it's beautiful. And it was very simple. And without all my jibber jabber, you could easily get that done a lot shorter time than I did. But again, I had an idea and I am so happy with how this came out. I was very pleasantly surprised that the only thing I really changed up on the idea was the bow. I just, I love this to death. It makes me happy just looking at it. So that's it guys. This is all of our wonderful little, oh, someone woke up and they're shaking their ears. <laughs> little zoopy. So guys, tell me what you think of these projects, the the applications, um, my little star bond mishap with one, but not the other. You guys, do you have experiences where that happens? Have you had any adhesive issues? Um, also the pumpkin, do you guys like, you know, attempt one, two, or three, which one was your favorite? I mean, obviously we stuck with three and it's in there and it's not getting changed, but should maybe in the future, you like to have a cute little happy one. Maybe I could go back and attempt to do another, you guys, I Googled real mushrooms on my phone to look at pictures. I am not an artist, <laughs> but I was going to try. <laughs> anyway, if you're having fun, that's all that matters. Even when you're having an absolute failure, if you're still having fun, then it doesn't matter. Just keep having fun. And I love how that candle ring turned out. I don't mean, I, I'm not calling it a wreath because my intention to use this is going to be as a decor piece. It'll be on the top of a table or a candlestick such as this, but you guys let me know how you feel. Also, I did just recently list a lot of items. A lot of my DIYs are for sale in my coffee page. So go take a look. Thank you for everyone who has donated to me so far. You're helping me get those craft supplies. Your, your support is greatly appreciated. Never, ever required. But even just being here, you guys, just say hi in the comments. That helps YouTube know that you, that you still like me and you love me and will suggest me. And I'll keep growing. But other than that, that's the end of the video, guys. So I'm going to say I love you, like always. Take care of yourselves and each other. You're doing a great job so far. Um, many hugs, happy crafting, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.